You're watching RTV News with me, Jane Mutoni. President Paul Kagame has pointed out that the difficult times Rwanda has had to endure should be a source of strength and lessons that help the country to continue developing. Officials at the Rwanda Cycling Federation have again noted that the just concluded Tour de Rwanda has left important lessons for the country as it prepares to host the World Road Cycling Championship in 2025. Vaughn, welcome to the news in details. Now, President Paul Kagame has pointed out that the difficult times Rwanda has had to endure should be a source of strength and lessons that help the country to continue developing. Now, the head of state made the remarks while attending the 27th National Prayer Breakfast function that was hosted by the Rwanda Leaders Fellowship on Sunday morning. The function brought together up to 300 participants, comprised of religious leaders as well as members of the public and private sectors. Addressing those present, President Paul Kagame noted on all the trials the country has had to endure over the years, and also took the time to remember Dr. Paul Farmer and Joe Ricci, who he commended for all they did to help Rwanda to develop. He also pointed out that Rwanda's experiences, however painful, should not be wasted. Rwanda what hasn't Rwanda experienced and seen? We should not waste the opportunity of having lived through these times that should have learned everlasting lessons for us. There is no slingshot that the world hasn't unleashed on us. Some have hit us, while others we have been able to shield ourselves from. After such things pass, we should not forget the experience. We should instead draw strength and lessons that allow us to develop and increase our pace in that respect towards our destination. The head of state also emphasized the need for all leaders, religious or not, to practice what they preach and ensure that their words and actions really do have a positive impact on the people they lead. We should always ask ourselves about these good doctrines that are also found in the Bible spoken by people who know about leadership and many other things. That is not enough. It is just half of what is required. How can the other half be implemented so that it becomes evident in the lives of people? I may preach very good sermons that everybody loves, but I have still done only 50% of the work. As for the other 50%, be it me who preached or those who I preached to, what have we taken with us to implement to change our lives and that of our country? You simply cannot avoid that. His Excellency the President also observed that a leader that does not lead by example cannot be a good leader and urged all leaders to let others praise them instead of boasting about their perceived achievements. Others present also took the time to thank God for helping the country to navigate the troublesome times it has had to endure over the years, not least of all the COVID-19 pandemic. The first national prayer breakfast function was held in September 1995 and the theme of this year's gathering focused on preserving all that has been achieved. Because of the pandemic, it had been two years since the last gathering took place. Officials at the Rwanda Cycling Federation have again noted that just concluded Tour de Rwanda has left important lessons for the country as it prepares to host the World Road Cycling Championship in 2025. Now, the final stage of this year's Tour de Rwanda was flagged off by President Paul Kagame and won by the Rwandan rider Moise Mugisha. Take a look. On the last day of the competition, riders rode down into Kigali City up from the hill of Rebero and also concluded the stage on top of the same hill after covering a distance of 75.3 kilometers and the Rwandan rider Moise Mugisha won in a time of 2 hours, 8 minutes and 16 seconds. The Eritrean rider, Nathaniel 
Tess Fazion was able to hold on to the yellow jersey, winning the Tour de Rwanda with an overall time of 23 hours, 25 minutes and 34 seconds. Rwandan riders are determined to improve their performance moving forward. I am very happy about this, seeing that I was very discouraged because last year I was unable to race because of the situation I found myself in. Now I believe I can once again become a strong competitor and know I have the support of all Rwandans. Together we will be able to achieve our goals and this is just the beginning. Rwanda's potential as a cycling tourist destination has also not gone unnoticed. I believe Rwanda has a bright future when it comes to tourism based on sporting activities like cycling. People will certainly want to come and go for rides here. In fact, there are Belgians who have told me that they will come here to do just that because of the pleasant atmosphere of the country. Visitors like the renowned Burundian singer Kajanin have also praised the country's ability to host major competitions like the upcoming World Road Cycling Championships in 2025 and officials at the Rwanda Cycling Federation have again noted that the just concluded Tour de Rwanda has left important lessons for the country as it prepares to host the championships. Being able to properly organize the Tour de Rwanda gives confidence to the UCI that we will also be able to properly host the upcoming World Championships. There is no doubt that we have a busy three years ahead, but we Rwandans are accustomed to hosting big important events, which is why I am confident about it. As for the sport of cycling itself, we have much promise, be it in the national team or teams like Benediction. This is all possible through proper coordination and a time for all Rwandans to be happy about the results. This is the second time Nathaniel Tess Fazion has won the Tour de Rwanda after doing it back in 2020 and this is the first time a Rwandan rider has won a stage in the Tour de Rwanda since the race attained a 2.1 classification ranking from the International Cyclist Union or UCI. At the 6th General Assembly of the Social Democratic Party, Dr. Vincent Viruta was re-elected to lead the party for the next five years as the party's investment company, Top Investment Limited, also got approved to help increase the party's assets and boost investment activities. Dr. Vincent Wiruta, leader of the Social Democratic Party, has been re-elected to lead a seven-member committee as the party just gained four new members. As the General Assembly, the members of the PSD approved the establishment of its investment company, Top Invest Limited, as it is expected to increase the party's assets through investing in various institutions in order for the party to own enough assets, as explained by the leader of this party, Dr. Vincent Wiruta. This will be beneficial because they have their own administration and operates in accordance with the rules governing investment companies, which is in stark contrast to the party's political leadership. Hence, the company helps the party to invest in valuable assets, which can bring in more income. Hence, the party using the income in its activities, such as advertising the party, and to buy what is needed to advertise the party. So we wanted to clear the difference or put a gap between the rules governing a political party and those governing investment and companies. The party says it will participate in the elections of deputies and senators which are scheduled to take place in 2023 and will also play a key role in the 2024 presidential elections. The Senate President, Dr. Iamuremia Auguste, who is also from PSD, says that as a party, they disagree with those who say that this party is influenced by other parties. PSD has ideas, experts, employees and many people supporting it and it works with other political parties, and it is recognized everywhere. So those that discuss it, let them continue. And those who say that we are influenced just because we get along with other parties, they are misled, and we stand not affected by them. In the 6th General Assembly of PSD, 
It was approved that the organic rules of the PSD be amended on the basis that there are certain provisions that are not relevant to the time. Ouimani Mai Jean d'Arc, deputy spokesperson of the Social Democratic Party, says PSD is a party that makes significant contributions to the joint projects of political parties. We have various programs, such as youth training programs. PSD provides it to the youth in other parties as well and symposiums related to the country's leadership and other topics related to the development the country wants. So we commend PSD for all that. The PSD is one of the 11 recognized political parties in Rwanda born in July 1991 and played a key role in fighting against dictatorship that existed in the country until 1994, striving for peace, democracy and the well-being of the people. Today in Kigali, more than 70 were awarded for their outstanding service delivery. The voting was done online. Now, in the meantime, the Ministry of Trade and Industry says efforts have been made to improve the service sector as Rwanda aims to increase citizens' appreciation of service delivery to more than 90% by 2024. Those who were awarded for outstanding service delivery were 71 in various categories, including the hospitality sector, tourism business and those that offer other basic necessities. The awarding considered people's voting via online platforms. Some of those who were awarded say that this motivates them to improve their service delivery to the community. The ceremony was attended by various agencies in line with a service delivery including the Rwanda Governance Board, RGB, the Rwanda Development Board, RDB, the Ministry of Trade and Industry and the private sector. The managing director of Karisimbi Events that organizes the awarding ceremony, Mujisha Emmanuel, says the event helps to increase the level of service delivery and highlight the importance of the service sector to the country's development. So this Consumer Choice Award looks so much at quality of the products and the, and the reputation of, that, of, the brand, of different brands. So we have that service, yes, service excellence, but then how about the quality of the products? Someone can be having, uh, giving good services, but when the product, uh, quality of the products is poor. So we want to encourage, uh, to, to put there that, that competition to encourage service providers as well as uh, producers uh, to strive for perfection and excellency and to encourage others who are not doing well in that area to also improve. So that's our main purpose as a East African Youth Development Agency and the Karisimbi events and we encourage those who take the awards not to just keep them like as a symbol in their cupboards but uh, to, to really prove that they really deserved these awards. The Director General of Planning, Monitoring and Evaluation at the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Jonas Munyurangabo, noted that the service sector has been given priority in line with the country's development. Consumers need to uh, have a central role in determining and appreciating the services that we are getting from the business community. I think if you look at the way this event has been organized, it's actually the consumers who uh, voted those companies that they think are the best uh, service providers. I think this gives the consumer the central law, role that they deserve so that they can really give feedback to service providers and we really appreciate this. Overall, citizens appreciate a service delivery at the rate of 74.1%. The security sector is the most appreciated at the rate of 91.6% and the agriculture sector appreciated at the rate of 59.5%. The goal is that by 2024, residents will be appreciating service delivery at the rate of 90%. Sam Kalisa, Rwanda Television News. Thank you, Sam, for that report. Now, the city of Kigali has noted that various roads that are under construction in the city will be completed soon, adding that residents in Kigali will no longer have to worry about the issue of traffic jams, especially during big conferences. Sam Kalisa reports. Some locals often point out that during international conferences that are attended by many dignitaries, they find it difficult to travel as always. That road is very small, so when there are officials and some roads are blocked, it causes a lot of traffic jam. 
With less than three months to go before Rwanda hosts the Commonwealth Heads of State and Government meeting Chogum, some roads are under construction while others are being renovated, something residents say will be a relief to them in terms of reducing traffic jams during the meeting. <laughs> Renovating and expanding roads is important because during the previous conferences we would delay to go to work due to traffic jam. So now that roads are enough, delegates will travel safely and will also be left with enough roads to use. The city of Kigali engineer, engineer Asaba Katabarwa, assures residents that the roads are being constructed to facilitate the flow of traffic and that it will be completed before Chogam kicks off in June this year. We believe many of those roads will be completed and people won't have any problem to move to their respective engagements. Even the roads that will not be fully completed will be on the level of being used. However, there are many roads that were fully constructed but people do not use them as they should. So we encourage a city residents to use those roads and not main roads alone. For example, the Chiovu-Virjogo road, the Deberonyanza road, and others should be used during big conferences because that's when we mainly experience traffic jams. It is also expected that by June this year, the Jali and Kanyinya Hills will be covered with new hiking infrastructure which will help Chogam participants to relax and tour the city. Chogam is scheduled for June 20th and more than 5,000 participants are expected in the country. The meeting has previously been postponed for two times due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, there you have it. On behalf of the entire NIST production team, thank you so much for your company. I'm Jane Motoni. Have a great week ahead.